This Richard back at you guys. We got Justin's 06 Dodge in the house. This is a pretty nice truck. Twin turbos, all the fuel system. I mean, everything's been done to this thing. We got an air dog system on it. We got twin turbos. We got a massive turbo here. And we got another one down, buried down inside there. Got the high performance exhaust manifold. It's got a, also got a billet flywheel on it. Now, he had this tranny done 60,000 miles ago. Supposed to have a, a multi-clutch converter, billet shafts, and all this type of stuff in there. So he wants to go ahead and get it freshened up by us just to verify what he physically has in there. So we're gonna get there and get that apart, but I believe it's Dodge Week here. We got a transmission job. We got a clutch job here going on. But what we got here is we got a uh, saw out bearing noise and uh, I believe he put the clutch in about 30,000 miles ago. So we're hoping we can just pull the uh, tranny back out and put a throwout bearing in here and save the gentleman some money. We don't really like doing that on an old, old clutch, but since it's that low of mileage, we'll pull it out and look at that and, and, and hopefully we can save him some money. And we got our Dodge here that uh, we're doing. Uh, we're putting, uh, we're doing the tranny in it. We're doing the transfer case in it. We're doing everything, steel planets. I mean, parts are starting to show up. We are ordering parts from all over the world, guys, to get in here to keep this shop going. We got Trent on the computer, Cody helping him, Trent teaching him how things go here, because every, every vehicle we get into, we have to hook our laptop up to it or our scanners and stuff like that and see what's going on with these vehicles. So that's the number one thing we do. We get it in, hook our scanner to it, see what type of codes we have, what's going on. Annie? Come on, come on. She's funny sometimes, guys. Come on in here. You can lay in here. We got some AC going for you. There you go. But guys, we got stuff going on everywhere. Everywhere, let me tell you. But Justin's 06 Dodge Tranny, you can see here we got a nice billet converter. We're gonna take it apart, see if you got billet, you know, input shaft and all that stuff. So I've got a nice pan. Now we went and drove the tranny, it seemed to work pretty decent, had some good firm shifts and stuff, but uh, I believe he said something about fourth gear. We're definitely gonna go in there and look there. So, oh, and yes, uh, he found a bowl in the pan. So I'm not sure if this mounts the filter, the governor pressure sensors or whatever, but uh, there was a bolt in the pan. Uh, also, we wanna thank Corvair Wild. Guys, he sent me some uh, pression socks. I've never tried them before. Uh, he, he was talking about the white socks that I've had on and stuff that he said he guaranteed if I put a pair of these on that I would never go back to white socks. They're supposed to keep your uh, feet from getting sweaty or anything like that. I've never had a pair. They're pretty neat looking. They have a left and a right. I'll kind of pull them out. They are very cool. You can see the right here. The other one I have a left on it. Like I say, these are my first day in on them. I'm really, I think I can uh, put, go to a smaller size shoe even, I think now it feels, it feels really good. It takes you a little bit to get used to them, but once you start walking around on concrete and stuff, it, it really feels good. They're supposed to aerate your feet, keep them dry. Pretty awesome. And another thing, guys, these diesel parts are getting harder and harder to find. And I mean, we got guys trying to bring these trucks from miles away. If you can find your parts, you can find steel planets, you can find, um, your triple disc converter, if you can find your billet input shaft, if you can get all that stuff together before you call us and say, hey Richard, I have these parts already together, can I get my truck in? That will save us a ton of time on trying to research the world to get enough parts in here to do these when we got 15 Dodges on the lot to try to do them. So you could imagine having 15 billet shafts set in here, 15 billet converters set in here. I mean, it's just a cycle that we're going through. We're eating parts up like crazy. There's none to be had, guys. But anyway, if you can gather parts up, if you know what you got and what you want, get them gathered up. Call us in. It makes it a lot easier on us to get you in here and get you out of here. So, but anyway, with that being said, thank, thank you, Teresa, for recording. Definitely, we love you to death for that. Let's get this thing apart because I want to see what we got in here. We got a beautiful converter here. It looks like it weighs 500 pounds. I mean, it's got this big old solid backing plate on it. I'm sure it's a triple disc. Because he, uh, and it might even be a five disc. I don't have his paperwork, but they do well, make them. Yeah. He said triple disc. Triple disc. Yes. This is one heavy dude. I mean, 
you know, no wear on the hub, just some little markings you normally get on them. But the fluid looks pretty dark. Now he pulls 30, 40,000 pound trailers daily, I believe is what he was talking about. Now I don't know if you can see here, you can see here that the pump gear was in really nice. Now we might be getting some flex on the uh, flywheel, even though he's got a billet flywheel. If you look here, you can start to see these markings start coming on. You see that, that darkness right through there? And then it kind of gets, it looks a little different where there's no darkness and then there's nothing at all. So that tells me the hub could be put on just a little tiny crook, you know, thousands, two thousands. You know, anything like that can cause that. A uh, flywheel, you know, he's got a nice billet flywheel on there, but you know, these Dodges make so much torque when you turn them up, they're gonna flex somewhere. Whether you got billet flywheels, billet converters, something's gonna give. Just like Don over PPE tells me on my race car motor. Richard, when you're making 2,500 horsepower, when I give you your motor, my numbers are dead on, he said, but when you're up on boost making that kind of power, he said there ain't nothing dead on. It's stretched, bent, everything's moved out of shape. But when my numbers are on, that's why my motors stay together. And you know, of course, Don, we really appreciate you definitely for taking care of us on our motors and stuff here in Amarillo. So we'll get this overdrive housing off here first. Look back in here. Like he said, he had, uh, I thought he said overdrive problems. Maybe getting weak, uh, stuff like that. So. Now this little bracket right here, we usually kind of come over and tap it a little bit, kind of shake the bolts up a little bit. Also take a, your torques and put in here and kind of give it a little bit of smack. Just to try to loosen them bolts up. Your torque's really small, so it's really easy to twist it off and you can already see all the rust around these bolts. Really rusted, you don't want to break them. So I've gone through many of these torque sockets. Uh, they warranty them. That's one good thing about uh, Maco. They warranty them. Now you want to get in here and look and see if he did anything here for like a case saver or anything like that. And uh, the way it looks has quite a bit of wear down in here in that overdrive snapping groove. You can see the groove, but then you can see the wear towards the back side of that. So this shaft is moving that far back and forth out of adjustment. Uh, your clearances are all messed up through here. Now we will come in here and uh, put one of these case savers that goes down in here. You might have to grind these tabs off to get it to set flush in back of the case, uh, but that will stop any type of wear uh, anymore at all. It'll actually shove everything nice and tight forward and you gain your clearance back. So it's a must on every one we do. Uh, we'll get our output speed sensor out of here real quick. A little bit of metal on here. Now a lot of these uh, here we see uh, fluid getting in them. You know, we'll clean them up and look at them. And uh, being that this is kind of a clear plastic, you can physically see fluid down in it. If this thing's pink on the inside, you know there's fluid getting inside there. And, and they can do it. We get them in here all the time like that. I, uh, I actually got a video out there uh, showing uh, one with pink fluid in it. See if we can get this overdrive housing off there. We're going to get our little wire looking snap ring out of here. Throw it on the ground. Now this snap ring here is basically just a, for assembly purposes only, just to hold your overdrive clutches in there. Now you can see here, we just have five clutches in overdrive. You know, if we, we can add an extra clutch to the overdrive on this one, but the problem is we have noticed uh, with TV motors, uh, we, can, uh, we can get a harsh downshift in the tow haul position. So, you know, every one we do, it seems like that's that way. In normal uh, drive position, uh, overdrive off, stuff like that, it works fine. But if you put it in tow haul, when you come to a stop, you get that downshift thump. And, and, and that we, it comes down to that snap ring. We, I don't know why it does it, but it does it. And uh, we put it back to normal and it doesn't do it, so. Got a 
find this wavy snap ring here. See, it's wavy. Now, we like to put, he almost had the opening in the cavity right here. You can see this opening of this snap ring is almost in this cavity. We like to keep the tips under a land. So if you're going to put this in, you know, you want to try to put this tip under here, this tip under here. Don't put it out here because that's what breaks the ends of the snap rings off. So you want to put it something like that. You know, this tip under here, this one under there. Same way, move this, turn it a little bit. You don't want to put them together. Turn it a little bit, put this tip under there, this tip under there. Don't put them in there like where the openings are towards this cavity right here because the snap rings will physically break off. So pretty simple. With this snap ring right here, we're just going to grab it and pull this out with our fingers here. And then we're going to reach in here and we're going to grab this snap ring. Oops. Uh-oh, Teresa. I Hang on, let me wipe her down just a little bit, guys. We kind of roughed her up a little. <laughs> okay, I got her polished back to new. <laughs> but this snap ring here, too, you got to look for wear. Even though we got case wear, we can have snap ring wear. So you got to look at this really good because every one of these snap rings we get in here, we have to almost replace all of them. So you can get this snap ring from Transstar too. So something you want to look at, always replace your seal here. That way your fluid doesn't leak out into your transfer case. Now, question, why does it look like this in here? Is it like water or? Yeah, it looks like he's gotten water in here. Now water can come up through this hole right here and get in here because this is designed uh, to, if this seal goes bad or your transfer case front seal goes bad, it's designed to weep out this hole and drip right here. And that tells you if one of them seals are bad. So you don't want to seal this all off because then you never know if a seal goes bad that your transmission is going to start putting fluid in your transfer case or vice versa. So Now if you look here, this is a billet shaft too. This is a totally different uh, design. I'm trying to see, I don't have one close hand to show you, but let me tell you, just by the color difference, this gray looking material, the way these splines are cut in here like this, this piece here is aftermarket. This is some type of billet shaft. So that tells me, it doesn't tell me that the transfer case uh, has a, a coupling that's billet because they do sell a two piece uh, kit for these trannies where you put a shaft here and you change the input shaft on the transfer case and it's a double locking system. You got splines and a keyway. So I don't know if that's, this ain't that way because I'll have to go out there and look and see if the other shaft is billet, but normally they're not. So. Now we will get this in there, get it apart, look at the sun gear, the planets and all that type stuff, see if it's all been changed. 90% of the sun gears we replaced, the bearing backing kits, um, all that type of stuff I show in all my videos that we replace in these things. Even we see them uh, with wear, even at real, real low mileage. So you could imagine uh, at 200,000 miles how much wear these things have on them. And they'll wear half mooned in here. This is where your 800 pound spring sets on here that applies your, uh, your direct clutch. Um, so we replace all of them too. So pretty cool. Get our overdrive piston out of here. I keep like a hundred of these in stock. That way I can get my clearances set really good between my overdrive clutch and my uh, direct clutch. We've got shortcut seals. And then we have a selective spacer right here that um, when you set your direct clutch and your overdrive clutch, this is selective. You can move this piston around with this. They make thick and thin ones. So now you get in here to this looks like can't tell if it's a billet shaft or not. That little scar in there, but I think that was scotch at, scotch brought out really good. Now we also have a selective spacer right here. See it's red, they make a blue, they make a yellow, they make a clear, they make multiple colors on this thing here and that tells you the thickness. So there's multiple places you can adjust this transmission in clearances. We 
have our pretty gold bolts that's always going to be in the back. This holds our case support on and our overdrive uh, support and our piston. Now this here, instead of having a TV lever here that a cable, when you push the gas pedal, it's going to pull the lever back. You let, push the, let off the gas pedal, it goes back. This physically has a motor up here that sits here and turns this. You push the gas pedal, the motor turns this way. When you let off the gas, the motor goes back. You push the gas, the motor goes back. And that's how it controls your TV pressure. Now, when they went to throttle by wire, when they got rid of the gas pedal cable, that's when this occurred. So. And then we have our neutral safety switch here. They made multiple versions of this here. This is the, the latest version though here. Look, we want to look in here for any type of fluid. Uh, Trent says there wasn't any fluid in there, but we're still going to put a new connector on there just to be safe. That's just, we have our band adjustment here. It looks like it's pretty far out. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to pull the pan valve body and kind of look and see uh, what our band and stuff looks like first. How's that sound? best thing you can do to a Dodge tranny or any tranny is put a bigger pan on it, deeper pan, where you can get more fluid in the pan. That way, uh, the, the turnaround time on the fluid, the cycle time of the fluid is greater. Now we got not a lot of metal, but we definitely got a, quite a bit of metal up here on this front uh, land here. That's why I liked it when they put these in here like this. It catches all the metal, keeps it from circulating it again. Uh, really good job, I mean, when they decided to start building them things, let me tell you. Because Dodge sucks off the bottom and it just sucks all that trash and just keeps cycling it through the filter. Now you could imagine if you had a stock pan and this filter sitting on the bottom of them like this, sucking all the trash all the time filter wouldn't last very long at all, but once you get the filter up off the bottom, then the filter just stays clean for a long period of time. Now I do see something I don't like. Oh, there it is. Okay. I thought I lost this seal right here. They might have left it off, and that would have been an air leak right there right off the bat. I don't see that come off very often, but it's kind of crazy. My other video I did on one of these, this has come off too, and normally that doesn't come off there like that. I don't know if it's glued on there or what. Now, I, I don't like doing this switch over to the early style uh, pressure sensor. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to put the right wiring harness back on it. Uh, we're going to, I don't even like going with the, with the aftermarket uh, pressure solenoid. We'll be putting this back stock. We're putting this back to the original, get the right wiring harness on it and make sure that he ain't having issues there. Got some type of. We've been straightening up a lot of stuff around here, guys. Let me tell you. A lot of things do work, and then a lot of things d doesn't work. Not everything will work on the same vehicle. You might get one that works on this vehicle, but when you try it on another vehicle, it's a totally different duck. I mean, you got to change it all up. It doesn't. I mean, everything about it's different. So. We see that a lot. Get that out of there. Probably out of there. It's kind of those sayings, just because not good for the gander, good for the goose. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, I, I watched a video of the, guy, uh, the other day, a guy got him a shift kit in and he put it in and he said, well, he said, they said the drill at this is this big, but he said, I thought if I drilled a little bit bigger, they'd be better. I never heard back from that guy yet to see if it was, so I really don't know. I haven't seen another video or 
anything for him to tell me that. Some of these are tough to get into. Let me get another tool I had to buy. Because some of the filter adapters got uh, real deep, shallow holes, and you can't get in there to get to them, so you got to get a different kit. Let's see what we got going on here. There we go. Everybody's got their own uh, way of doing things. Now, here's our bolt that was that we were missing. Oh, it's broke off. I wonder why that bolt was in the pan when it's broke off right there. Are you sure that broke? Yeah, I dropped it on the floor. It went under the table right there. But yeah, that looks like the same. Yeah, but I couldn't see what the end of it looked. I didn't notice that on it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why that's... You can see that's broke off right there. Right. And... I don't see any bolts missing in the valve body area because they take a different style bolt. Okay, well, there it is. But this one's still long. Yeah, see, that's that one that was on our paperwork. Right. See, but why is that one still in there with no head that's broken right. off? So that's why was, I, I, I don't know. Something don't make sense there. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let me get this out of the way. And we'll get our valve body off here. And we're basically looking in here just to see what the guy got when he, he had it built. I don't know who he who built it or anything like that for him. You can see here our neutral safety switch, rooster cone is wore plumb out. You can see the rut starting to get rutted all the way through it. Mm -hmm. We replace all of those there. We do a lot of updates to the valve body. Get our intermediate accumulator spring and accumulator out of there. It's a dual ring system, pretty nice. Now the shift kit will come with a, a different spring, but the trans go or, or whatever, you just never know. Oh heck, I gotta break this thing in guys, I ain't used it yet. See how good it works. Yeah, now you don't have to go to all your other tables, you'll have one on each. One on each table. Look at that, guys. Now, if it lasts the torture that we give it, then very good product. We get our bolt here out. Now, this is a special bolt just for this linkage here. Let's it float around a little bit. That way, when you put it on, it doesn't break this connector off right here. So it is special. Now, you can see here, they definitely come in here and uh, enlarge the feed hole to the converter clutch. Now this hole here will give it more clamping pressure, I believe. The, our shift kit will physically come with a plate to retrofit it back, but we don't probably want to retro it back because we want a really firm lockup and the weight this gentleman's uh, towing and stuff, we don't want to mess with it too much. Now we will change this bracket out right here to the gold one, a heavy duty bracket instead of using the stock one right here. See if they fix the TV problem here. Not TV, but the manual valve problems they have. These things are bad about uh, hanging in park, hard to get out of park, stuff like that. And we repair all that type of stuff. Now, of course, you can see here we just had a ball and spring for the detent. In other words, when you move your shifter from park to re reverse, you feel this ball jumping over these humps. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, okay. Teresa. 
stuff at me now. Okay, sorry. But anyway, we, we uh, put a uh, trans gold bullet, is what we call it in here, with a long sleeve and a new spring. That way it uses the whole body of the bore uh, through here to uh, keep it all lined up and stuff. So Now also, we've learned too, on these parking rooster cones, this thing has a really steep ramp right here at the end. We like to take just a tad of that off right there. That way it'll let that ball or that new transgo uh, bullet slide up that hill a little bit better and not try to hang on this edge right here. You don't want to take off much because then you can knock it out of park easy. But just a little bit to get that thing to come over that hill just a little bit. And you can see here we have an aftermarket valve. Now we will be updating that to a, a, a Sonex valve. We want to get a full-time lube circuit in this thing. But we're going here and let's see what we got. get the overdrive and the lockup still right off here and also your temperature switch is built into this system too right here you see here now you can if this isn't leaking and you want to use it at home uh, when you clean this up just make sure you hear these shake you hear that shake there's two, two valves that slide up and down in here. If they move good, clean the screens good, you can put it back on if it's not leaking in the connector. Leaking in the connector, chunk it. Just get rid of it and get you a new one. Real simple. We'll look in here, see what they did to the overdrive accumulator. Now it does just have the factory spring in it for the overdrive accumulator. Now there could be more modifications uh, they could have done through here, take it off and do some hole drilling and stuff and plugging. Now your transgo kit, if you put in here, it will have you do some things like that to the overdrive section. This tranny shifts really firm and that's why I'm trying to go in here and look and see what he did and stuff like that and see if we agree with what he did. Now your two alignment bolts are these two here. So you put it back together, you put these two in, get them started, and then you go ahead and put these in, pull these two down first. Then start to put them, tighten them down, then torque them out from the center out. But these two corner ones are your alignment bolts. Now this bolt here is a little bit longer because it used to be a filter bolt. Uh, the, the early design of the filters took all three bolts. Uh, the later design just took two. So it is a longer bolt than all of them. Now also this bolt right here, uh, it can be a shorty or it can be a long, uh, depending on uh, at the dealer who did it or whatever, it's a shorty. See, so it's, all these are longer than this one, it's the only short one you have. Come on here and look in here, see if he, I like to look and see if they put any valving, turn valves around backwards, stuff like that, because they do that type of stuff drill any holes or anything for full manual lockup or anything like that. Now here we have these three little tiny holes. Here's one here, there's one in here, and there's one in here. You can't see them very good. You can see that one. This has to be really clean and make sure there's no trash in them holes right there. Cleanliness is your friend. Now, anytime you have a, a dual hole like this, a trough, you always want to take put a check ball here. Never leave it out. Just a little bitty thing. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Right a little there. bitty. Put it over there in your comfort zone. And we have all of our check balls in the troughs. And then here for our TV ball. And then our third accumulator ball. So, now you remember, uh, the plate's been drilled a little bit, I can tell by looking at it. This is a stock plate, though, here. 
But you can see here that this hole's been drilled a little bit bigger for a second. He, I don't think he drilled this one. If he if he would have drilled this one, he would have helped third. But since he he left this one alone, the if you don't drill them both, you're restricting it right here. So pretty simple. No lockup modifications. This is a 48 RE high pressure valve body, so you're going to be looking here for this hole. If you get a transgo kit, that's the very first thing that transgo kit's going to ask you about that hole. That way you can identify what valve body you have. Now your transgo uh, kit's going to come with a different style filter here. Uh, it's going to be a cone looking filter. Now if you notice here, he did leave the reverse check bolt. Nope. Yep, he left it out completely. It's not in there. It's not, it didn't fall out. I don't see it. But normally there would be a reverse check ball here. And then we'd have our forward check ball here. So I don't know why he would leave that out for reverse. Don't understand that part. But we do have our intermediate band right here. If you want to look at it, you can kind of grab a screwdriver and pick up on it. That thing is adjusted pretty tight, but if you look at it, it's a hard band. It's not a flex band. It's physically a band uh, that you can't wobble around like a spring. <laughs> I'll show you when I get it out. So the adjustments on them are totally different than your standard band. Now he does have aftermarket anchors like our last video. A little bit, the other one we had is actually a little bit thicker here. You want to definitely make sure the thick part goes down. If you turn it up, this part can hit the valve body when you go and bolt it down. So, pretty simple. Now this doesn't show to have a 48RE pump in it. It looks like it has a different style pump. Which, which guys, right now I got a pump coming in from California and I'm in Amarillo, Texas. And we're getting these parts coming in everywhere. UPS lives here. FedEx lives here. Postal Service lives here. And that's what it's taken to do all this stuff now. Literally, I mean, we're wearing ourselves out uh, more on just trying to get parts than it is building the trannies. So. like to look down in there because it almost looks like an aftermarket stator. I'm going to look at something real quick. It might not be. I just want to look down this one real quick and just see. Definitely machined a little different so I was kind of wondering if this is an aftermarket stator. You can kind of see down in here how the machining is more chamfered down through here where you have this style here is a square cut probably doesn't matter it just makes me wonder if uh, this one here a uh, bit chamfered like that keeps it from twisting off easier it's not in a, a square cut type situation right here the stator right through here so got a lot of bluing off of it no ruts or anything i can tell you it doesn't have a 48 re pump body and gears that's all too small. All this stuff's too small. But we want to definitely look and see if the body's wore out. Look right through here. This is where your gears normally wear from here to here on these dodges. You'll get start getting a lip right through there. Body looks good. Bushing starting to look a little rough. You know, we talked and showed you the wear on the hub there on the torque converter, and that's what you're seeing rubbing on that bushing causing that wear. See, so when you you can put all the billet stuff in the world and you got your Dodge turned up and that 1,700 foot pounds of torque it's making with your 
50,000 ton trailer 50 foot long behind your truck, something's going to flex no matter how you look at it. If you've got the baddest of the baddest, and it, it's what they call, what I call, uh, just overpowering the tranny, uh, the driver not knowing how to drive the vehicle uh, to pull that type of load. Because I've got guys out there that have a lot less that can pull these loads and not tear up nothing because they know how to drive them. But the thing is, most of them drove a semi all their life. So if you've been driving a semi all, all your life and you get in a Cummins and you know, how to, you know how to pull a trailer. But if you get a guy that doesn't know how to pull a trailer, he's gonna be a lot harder on your tranny uh, than a guy that does know how to pull a trailer. So we have what we call a hard band here. This is a band that doesn't bend, it's solid. Let me go get a flex band over here. This here is a flex band. Bends all the way around like that. You have a hard band like this. Is this band stronger? The body, the tabs might be stronger, but the thing is, if you bump the pressure up in this tranny, you're gonna break all kinds of stuff. I, I believe myself, uh, the flex band will hold up just fine and be just as strong. If you look at this uh, hard band, it's burn up. So, uh, overloading, stuff like that, uh, not having the shift kitted, because it doesn't look like it's been shift kitted at all that I can tell. Uh, pressure, let me look in here. He might have the pressure uh, cranked up. This is your pressure regulator spring through here. And the gap right here normally would be the thickness of your pan bolt or your pump bolt. That should slide in there and that would be your, your normal setting for a factory spring. If you want to up it a little bit, go a half a turn, shove the spring in a little bit farther. Does, has it been modified for any type of lube circuit? Now we will modify all this area through here for a full time lube, stuff like that. So Now we do have a aftermarket drum here. You can tell here that uh, the snap rings all the way to the top of this drum. Let's see how many clutches they got in here. Do not, we don't have a, a bevel or wavy snap ring, just a flat snap ring, but it's a wide snap ring. It makes it a lot stronger. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six clutches for third gear. Starting to get pretty dark, but it hasn't cooked them yet. Now if you look at the bushing and the drum, it's gone. The drum's got markings, but you don't feel them or anything like that. So you could 180 grit this drum, put it back in, new bushing. Always taking scotch bright this area right through here where your ceiling rings used to run. Even though there's, you see that shadow of a ring, there's nothing there. Scotch brought it up, make it look really pretty. And I was wanting to look here. He does have just factory stock stainless rings in here. Now our Transgo kit, of course, is going to have the blue uh, Teflon high pressure rings in there. So, okay, guys, here's another beautiful piece. Now this is a billet piece here. It does have the stock forward sealing ring on it. And our our uh, Transgo kit again is going to address this problem here with this ceiling ring. They're going to give you a green one, high pressure Teflon. And then your kit's going to have these rings here. Pull them off there. You can see how they kind of lock together. See that? There's another one here. They don't break very easy, so you can kind of be rough with them. They're not going to... But don't take... You, you breathe too rough, you can break it, but... <laughs> Of course, we have a selective snap or washer right here too, guys, that where we set our end clearances up too. So, and we have a four clutch forward gear. Like I was telling you guys, these forward clutches can tow a ton of weight. Ton of weight. I think he said 30,000 pounds, stuff like that, 40,000. Look at that, ain't touched them, ain't even put a dent in them. Wavy snap ring there. We have our bevel plate, our plastic 
washer, spacer, whatever you want to call that dude. And then we have our forward clutch piston. This one does have the long sealing rings, or seals, excuse me. And then we have our nice shaft. You want to always scotch bright up right through here where your bushing, your stator bushing runs. Look at it really good. Shaft looks nice. You can even scotch bright this stuff up through here where your new seals are going to be running. Scotch bright this, scotch bright this. Scotch bright you can use in more places than you can imagine in this tranny that you can't even, you would never think about that where we use scotch bright. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. I go through boxes of it. So I throw away a ton, but I go through a lot. Of course, we have our selective three tab washer here. They make three different thicknesses of this right here. Look at that. Get in here and look at our planets and stuff. You don't very seldom ever see these six pinion planets go bad. Uh, the, the problem that we're running into is upgrading in two six pinion planets and us having to try to supply all the stuff. So what I'm going to tell you guys, if you're going to bring me a Dodge diesel tranny and you want to buy all your, your, your parts, you know the steel, the front one's going to be steel 99.7 of the time. If you get it like a, a 99 down, early 99 down, it could be aluminum, 12 valve. So you can buy the steel planted here, your ring gear uh, will interchange. But when you go to the steel planted in the back, you got to go to the thicker shell. You have to go through the thicker groove sun gear because the shell's thicker. And when you get your planet, uh, you've got to have six tab washers. See, because your, your new six uh, planet's going to have six tab washers. You've got to have your washers, your planet, and also you got to have your hub and ring gear because now your planet, your washer rubs on your hub instead of on the early aluminum design you have a spacer in there and your planetary is a washer and your uh, planetary rubs on the spacer. See, so you have to have this, you have to have two sets of washers, you have to have a wide shell, you have to have a wide groove sun gear and you have to have the planetary. Well guys, good luck on finding that stuff. You know, so, it's like I said, it's not the pr problem finding the washers. We got brand new washers over there in bags by the dozens, it's just finding planets. I just found two planetary assemblies right here, guys, that just come in this morning because we're retrofitting early design to later design with bigger thrush washers and stuff like that. That way, these guys can pull that big trailer because your first gear when you take off, all the load's on this washer. When you shift the second gear, all the load goes to this washer. That's getting the trailer moving. So that's why we want to upgrade to all this stuff. But trying to find that stuff now, guys, it's terrible. I mean, we are we're struggling. Now we do have, your, your, this is a billet intermediate shaft too. I can tell by looking at it the way it's designed, the way there's no edges cut, everything's chamfered. There's no sharp edges. Now you can see aluminum starting to uh, connect to this shaft right here. That aluminum will come right off with no problem. We can buff this shaft out, polish it, make it look brand new. Be beautiful. Just remember, Scott's brought your friend. You can do a lot with it. Let me tell you, the, whoever designed that, uh, they're a genius. Actually, Scotch Bright, I think, ought to support us and send us a, a big old, a big old box of Scotch Bright. Now, if you notice down in here, um, this hub right here was rubbing. See this right here? Right here was rubbing. Well, you can see it was rubbing right here. So it took and flared all this aluminum right here, and there's a snap ring right here. I got the snap ring out. But now I've got to try to get that washer out of there and pull that hub out of it, that reverse drum, excuse me. Let me see if I can get that out. It's probably going to break. OK, 
Okay, there's that piece. We got that out. Hopefully this will pull out and turn. Okay, good. I was worried. But even though it uh, come out, it's still no good. If you look right here, it just chewed it all up right through here. All your cooler line oil that comes in the back of your case right here on your rear cooler line goes right through the case, through this support right here, and lubricates uh, this right off the bat. It gets the cold oil instantly. Uh, for one reason, your big sprags back here and it's all plastic. Got to flood this thing with oil, tons of it to keep that thing from melting. And we have our reverse band here. You can see here the tips are starting to flake off. Stuff like that. Once that starts happening, it goes to metal to metal. It starts eating this drum up right through here. So we don't want that to happen. Put a new band in there. I already know I took the bolts out of there. All of them. Oh, excuse me, I missed one. How'd I do that? Now here's our band strut for the case part of it. This is a pin that sets in and locks like that. And then your uh, servo apply pin is on the bottom. This moves and applies the band around the drum. Pretty simple. But you can look here, see how that started melting that? Right there, all the way around. And that's why this looks like that. See, and your cooler line oil comes right through here. See, hits this shaft here, hits all this sprag assembly, all your planetary gears that really needs it the worst with tons of oil. And that's an, another reason why we're going to put our Sonex full-time lube valve and stuff in the valve body. That way we can even put more in there. I mean, the more oil we can get on them planets, the cooler this tranny is going to stay. So, but anyway, we've got our intermediate servo here. We have our reverse servo here. I don't know if they've done anything in this area. Now they did leave the reverse check ball out. I don't know why they would do that on this tranny with a big old band like that. Because this, this has got the biggest band for reverse you, you see. Get that out of there. Doesn't look like they've done anything here. Still has the travel. It hasn't been blocked or anything like that. So your, your kit will come with a new seal. There. And then you have your intermediate servo. I want to get you, Teresa. Maybe I can hit this just a little bit. Get that out of there. Now this isn't the right spring that goes in here because normally the spring that holds this servo in, it'd blow the cover right out. So this, I don't know what this spring is doing there. I almost think that one goes there and this one goes here, but that's how it come out and we'll do some changing on it for him. So, pretty simple. Well guys, there you go, another Dodge in the house. That seems like all we do, Dodge, Chevy, Ford, I mean, we, we do them all. But Tricia, I want to thank you again for recording. Definitely guys, don't forget to go subscribe. We made 200,000, we're excited, we got a party coming. We have a party coming, we're very excited guys. Thanks to y'all, we made it and we got many more to go. Don't forget to subscribe, have a great day.